welcome to The Wendy Cooper Show. That's right, The Wendy Cooper Show, formerly known as Generation Jones Too Young to Be Old podcast. I'm your host, Wendy Cooper, and I hope you enjoy conversations with remarkable people over 50 just as much as I do. I consider myself a remarkable person over 50. I'm actually 63. So my goal is to build a community of like-minded people who are finding ways to celebrate today's pro-aging culture by coming together to stop ageism in our society. It's time to speak up, come out of hiding, and share our wisdom while embracing our age. We are living longer, and as the first segment of the population to feel the pinch of ageism due to longer lives, it is somewhat our responsibility to be loud and proud. So all generations to come will live long and thrive. I hope you enjoy the show. Today, my guest is Barbara Warren. She is the creator of The Perennial Project. The Perennial Project can be found at Perennial Project on Instagram or at perennialproject.com. So what does it mean to be a perennial? Technically, it means lasting for an indefinite time and suggesting self-renewal. Barbara also likes to think of it as a non-millennial. So let's sit back and take about 35 minutes to hear what Barbara's up to and what makes the Perennial Project stand out from other initiatives to bring the pro-aging community together and find a way to be responsible for this new movement that we're seeing in society as ageism continues to grow and pro-aging continues to get stronger. It's a wonderful, topic of conversation. It is a growing topic of conversation. And um, so let's get started. And without further ado, I love that expression. Let me welcome Barbara Warren from The Perennial Project to the show. Thank you, Wendy. It's really nice to be here with you. Perennial Project has become a media platform for me where I can explore all kinds of issues related to women in their middle years. So I've been writing a blog. I've been using Instagram as a big megaphone. I've been appearing, obviously, on podcasts, on television, and speaking. So it's been a a great way to get the message out there to talk about all of the issues and challenges and also opportunities that we're facing at this point in life. And there's an incredible amount of interest, as you well know, and it's growing all the time as not only our population is aging, but there's an interest by people in, you know, what else is going on? What can I do? What can I learn? So uh, it's really, it's very exciting to be part of the Perennial Project and to share it. We are, we are an aging population. Yeah, the numbers are staggering. And the power that that wields is also extraordinary in terms of um, our society, our, our manufacturers, our consumer goods, our advertisers needing to pay attention to us as well. Yeah, I guess so. You know, that's interesting because sometimes I don't uh, – I was talking to um, my guest last week, and Evine is, is creating an entire line with Jane Fonda. So Jane, Jane Fonda is 81 years old, and she's come in, and she's there creating a line of health and wellness for women over 55. I had to argue that, you know, Jane is 81, and, yes, yeah, she looks great, but she's not 55 or 60. I don't relate really to anybody – people that are 81. But awesome, Jane, that's very cool. But the point was was that – they started to realize that they really had to target that demographic. And I said, well, it would be really awesome if we were targeted the way we feel. Like, I know he still goes to rock and roll concerts. He loves Bruce Springsteen. This is the kind of stuff that we still do. And we just want to be... It, I think it needs to be relatable, you know. It's, it's like, I don't want to sit in front of my television set, Barb, and see a television commercial that offends me. I'm 63, and now I'm supposed to be having to take all of these different medications or wear something so I don't leak through my clothes, <laughs> you know. Or a drug that has 20,000 side effects. So that's a, a big factor, right, in this whole aging movement, because we're living longer, what does it look like? We have so much more time to accomplish and live and 
reinvent ourselves and have new new chapters. So you know, we're all feeling that as the ones going through this, and yet we're not being recognized by those that could be selling to us and talking to us. It's really fascinating. And what I have learned is that the the advertisers aren't interested in us because they don't believe that we can become customers. In other words, they believe that our buying patterns as consumers have already been set and they're not able to change our minds. So therefore, they're not interested in courting us. They'd rather court the millennials because they'll have them as consumers longer. Lately, I've had this idea that we are living in a parallel universe. So you've got, you know, the millennials, younger generation, and everyone's talking to them. Everything is geared toward them. Every, you know, uh, a piece of apparel that's good looking and, and all the exercise classes and all the trips and cultural things, they're all geared toward the younger folks, let's say the under 40s. We have our own version of all of that. You know, we're traveling, we're consuming, we are going to events and doing all kinds of cool things. So it's like we're we're living in a parallel universe. And isn't I thought that was just a really interesting way to look at it because the more I, I dive into it, the more realistic it is. And if that could be pitched um, as a way to I look agree. at us. I agree. That's the problem, though, is it's, 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 that's the challenge. The challenge is, is we're, I think we're just living in a time that has never existed before, right? We've never, we've never, when our parents were 60 or 65 or 55 or whatever, it, it just wasn't the same. We weren't digitally connected. We didn't have all of these devices. Our technology wasn't moving at the light of, you know, speed of light. Um, there was just a lot of different things happening or not happening that are happening today. And because because we kind of grew up and through the the analog to digital age, we're very savvy as far as technology is concerned. I mean, maybe I can't code a website, but I certainly know how to use my iPhone and I certainly know how to use Instagram. Um, but yet there's this, this odd disconnect because you're right. We're living in a parallel universe that has really never existed before. So nobody really knows what to do with it. Right. So, right. Exactly. That's it. So we're pioneers in aging, right? We're redefining aging just because of the way we're living. So there's the digital aspect, but there also, as you said before, the, the idea that we are living longer. So what do you do at that time? You know, growing up, we were taught to work and work towards retirement. Retirement happened at 60 or 65. And then what did you do? Um, my dad didn't do much once he retired. He he played a lot of bridge and he sat around. He didn't have a second act. It was just sort of like, um, you know, waiting for the, the twilight. That's what aging was. And if you were lucky, you know, people would move to Florida and go play a lot of golf. It was never seen as a dynamic time the way it is now. And because we're the first generation to really be living differently, um, it the task of changing conventional wisdom will be that much harder for us. It, we, we speak a different language. We view the world differently. We respond to input and stimuli differently. It's fascinating. And I think about it in, in terms of how I was raised and what my messages were. And then I think about the same for my kids. My, my kids are 19 and 22. And as you say, it's, it's completely different how they view and experience the world. And, but a lot of that has to do with what the time in which we were raised, right? So we were post-World War II. We were the first generation that was really starting to get ahead in America, not to get political, but let's let's say um, we we were post depression. We were the eight, the beginning of you know the, the not the boom years, but that was later. But really, like the um, birth of Middle America, the birth of um, 
the middle class. And it was a time of um, aspiration and people, you know, sending their kids to college and get an education and have a job and have a profession. And, and that's what we were taught. And then we came along and by and large, of course, I'm generalizing, but by and large, we did better than our parents. So then the messages that our kids got were different. My kids were raised with so much more than I was. And I you know, tried to teach them the importance of hard work and that's how you get ahead. And they get it on the one hand, but on the other hand, their experiences are so different because they've just seen so much more and have had access to so much more. So of course they're going to respond differently. I, I want to jump back to Perennial Project. On your Perennial Project, it's Perennial Project, perennialproject.com. Um, if you are listening where you can open up another browser and check it out as we're talking about it, that's awesome. Um, but you have different categories. It is a blog site and you have health, style and beauty, journeys, families and relationships. Um, can you can you kind of summarize like what is it like I call it moving into the second half of life. You're you you call it quite often midlife. And I and I think it's basically kind of the same thing. We're going into the second freaking half, people. <laughs> you know, there's there's we only have so much time on this earth. We never know when we're leaving it, but we have to be prepared for staying on it for a very long time these days. And can you talk a little bit more about you know, what is it that you do? I know that I know in health, right? So I know because I follow you on Instagram and I see that you're doing a new keto something or other, correct? Yes. Yes. A ketogenic diet. Yes. Your doctor told you that you should go on the keto diet, but I do see you making all of these different foods yourself, which I think is kind of fun. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's all part and parcel of the overarching theme of redefining aging. So, you know, we're, yes, we're aging. We're in our middle years are, are heading into the second half, however you want to name it. But our, our needs are changing, as I said before, physically, emotionally. So just to tackle the physical part, I went to the doctor. I, I suffer from um, some chronic fatigue and I have a seasonal affective disorder, also known as SAD. And it's crippling in the winter for me. It's really, really hard to get motivated and re remain energized in a day when it's getting dark at four o'clock and it's freezing cold. I, mean, I think I'm like a plant. I need sun and light. Um, but anyway, so I, I went to the doctor, Dr. Frank Lippman, who's really um, one of the people out there in, in this field of medicine. He's Eastern and Western trained. He's coming up with a line of foods and I, I really trust him. And he looked at me and, and said, I'm, it, it, my adrenals are exhausted. Uh, my, my whole body is fatigued on a cellular level and I had some inflammation in my liver and et cetera, et cetera. So he said, you know, you're going to feel better and be able to have more energy and just, you know, be well if you make some changes in your diet. So that was the impetus for keto. Oh, and the other thing is my blood sugar is a little high, which, um, can lead to diabetes. He said, I'm, I'm bordering on pre-diabetes, which really is frightening. Um, it doesn't make sense for my body type, but nonetheless, that's the reality. So I have cut way back on the sugar and the carbs because carbs essentially are sugar and um, really taken a, a, a deep dive into nutrition and the needs of my body. And it's fascinating. It's really it's very interesting. It, it definitely, as we get older, we really need to adjust how we eat and things like that. But at the same time, it's funny. I know exactly what I should be eating and doing. I had a problem where I went in January and I had my thyroid checked. And I've always had a low thyroid. I've always been on medication. And I think women of our age, if you're listening to this podcast, you should really heed this, what I'm, what I'm about to say and what Barbara just said, is that I had my blood work done, which I do every year. I'm a cancer survivor. And... Um, my thyroid was checked and my thyroid came back like like the lowest it's supposed to be is 0.35 right now it was 0.13 
So I thought to myself, you know, this past year, this entire year, since my last blood test, which was low at 0.38, but they didn't adjust my med medicine, um, I have been so tired and I've been so bloated and I have had such bad dry mouth and I gained nine pounds before I went to Italy in, in May, last May, and I, I fit into nothing, but I wasn't eating any differently than I'd ever eaten. Um, and then to have my blood test done and see that it was my thyroid, well, it was my thyroid. So we adjusted my medication and oddly enough, within the past three months, this is just March, everything has completely changed. I told my husband the other day, I have saliva in my mouth. I have my teeth cleaned and my, and she couldn't believe that my mouth was actually normal inside, right? Because I didn't, the effects that these hormonal changes and levels and things that maybe you deal with, but you don't pay any attention to, they, they so affect everything. My whole body hurt for a year. Yeah. And that's right. That's so telling, you know, everything is changing in, in us, around us, and you have to pay attention to it. You know, it, it makes sense when you think about it, that your body requires different things as it ages. You can't feed it the same things you were able to get away with when you were younger. Your, your body is, is shifting. So why would it respond the same way now? than it did 10, 15, 20 years ago. So let me ask you this question about style and beauty. What's your favorite style? And who is your, what is what is your go-to brand for skincare? Ah, um, my favorite style, that's that's broad, but I, I like a combination of things that are classic, you know, great cuts, great fits, simple. I'm a modernist. I'm a minimalist. But also where you can mix something that's really cool and geometric. I love the Japanese aesthetic. I think uh, somebody like Ray Kawakubo for, for Comme de Garçon is brilliant. You know, it's bringing architecture to clothing. So it can be extreme and not always commercial. Uh, but I I'd love to find pieces here and there that really just take something that's very simple and classic and make it extraordinary. I also love a, a great shoe or great accessory and like to do something fun. My favorite thing I bought recently was a pair of bright yellow Nikes and I wore them today and was stopped on the street. And it just added some fun and some whimsy to an outfit that was jeans and a cashmere sweater and a big coat. So I, I think fashion should be fun. It should be fun. And we should be, it was, it's, um, there's this thing that my, my sister-in-law is the same age as me and she can buy anything on this earth. And she always looks at me and she says, you know, just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? <laughs> because we always want to kind of like buy these like wild stuff or wear it or, you, you know, and, and, and we laugh about that because over the years, it's like, if we see somebody that is just a little bit over the edge of just because you can, doesn't mean you should. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I do ascribe to being tasteful. I, you know, you don't want to stand out in a crowd for the wrong reasons because you look silly. Um, you know, and like you're at a place, you're trying to look like a teenager, you know, don't do that. There, there are many, many, many trends we can wear, but there are certain things you just have to retire. Yes. You know, nobody wants to see our stomachs anymore. No, not unless it's a, not unless it's one of those, you know, like over <laughs> fit over 60 crazy ladies. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I still don't think anybody needs to see a 60 year old stomach. I totally agree with you. Um, and certainly I don't want to see mine. And that that kind of leads me to, let's talk a little bit about fitness. You know, I, I've i always, I've always loved to, you know, like stay fit. Not crazy fit, not crazy fit, but fit. You know, I was in gymnastics when I was younger and I'm a big Frisbee player because on the beach, I'm a big, like huge fris Frisbee player. And um, you know, I was never a runner or anything like that, but I did always like to like do weights. And then I kind of got into yoga and spinning about 10 years ago. And then a couple of years ago, my favorite place closed down, they closed their franchise. And I just have had a really hard time kind of getting back into doing too much of anything on a regular basis since, since for the past few years. And every single day I do wake up and I say, hey, you see that yoga mat over there and you see, <laughs> you see all that equipment that I, I have 
minimal equipment, but enough to get a good workout. My body is enough to just get a good workout, right? Um, and I still don't really, you know, I go for walks and stuff like that. So, so I know you have dogs and you probably walk a lot. You live in the city and you probably will walk a lot. But are you, are are you crazy in the, the fitness thing? I just am not right now. I I, I don't know. I don't know. You know. I go through phases with it. Um, certainly the warmer it gets outside, the more physical I am. I'm a tennis player. I love being outside in the summer. I'll walk a ton in the spring. Um, but then it, I also do Pilates and I try and keep up with Pilates during the year and uh, less tennis, uh, but it's hard. Yeah. I, that's one thing I definitely beat myself up over is not working out enough. And last year I was told I had the very, very beginnings of osteoporosis and I should do more weight training. So I'm trying to kick myself in the butt as often as possible and take a class that has some weights in it. I, I do the bands. I have bands at home. I find that bands are pretty, are, are like a little bit easier. Well, you know, weight training and all that, we, we, you have to do resistance training basically is for your, for your bones. Yeah. Yeah. Resistance is great, but also um, that, that doesn't build muscle as much as actual lifting. So I think a combination of both is, is really good. Uh, but I was going to say, you know, I, I lose my motivation and I, then I kick myself and the best thing happened the other day. I had signed up for a class with a girlfriend and I, and it was on a Sunday morning and I started to pull my, Oh, I don't want to go. And, and she kicked me in the butt and she said, you're going, get out of bed. You're going. And you know what? It was just what I needed. I needed a buddy. Yes. I needed yes. the support. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I, that's the only time I've been consistent is when I had my friend Kelly. Kelly and I would get up at six o'clock in the morning and she couldn't say no. And I couldn't say no because, you know, we were doing that together. Right. Right. I've got a post coming out on that and how much we we need each other and can support each other. And also, you know, at times when I'm when I, I can't motivate because it's cold and dark or I'm in a depressed state or whatever it is, I, I wish there was a buddy system. Like somebody, some sort of, you know, buddy hotline who's there, who's picking you up. An app. There's got to be, Barb, there has to be an app. I was telling somebody not too long ago, I said, this is what you have to, we have to create a, a like an app. So, you know, almost like a Tinder app for working out. It's, it's who's, who's available. I'm going to get you out of bed or, you know, your phone rings, you set the alarm, but yet it just turns, you can't turn it off until you like move away from your bed. <laughs> Like electric shock in your bed that makes you get up. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you have? What do you have coming up? You didn't answer my skincare question. I'm a skincare junkie. I use a lot of different products for different things. Um, so, my number one newest toy, actually, is an infrared light. And actually, Dr. Littman recommended that to me for helping to heal. Um, uh, college, not heal, to regenerate collagen. And that would be good for skin and wrinkles, but also it would help on a cellular level to make me feel better. So I've been using that on my face. Um, it's also good for hair regrowth and it's FDA approved. So I think that's really fascinating. I've been using it for about two months and my skin is really feeling better or looking better. It's just getting plump. It's getting plumper, right? It kind of stimulates the collagen, correct? Yep. Yeah, so that, and I use an oil-based wash. I don't use anything sudsy. It's, they're too drying. Um, Biologique Recherche has the m most exquisite toner. It's it's very cultish. It's, uh, 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 I think it's called pH 50, um, but it's, it's um, very balancing, neutralizing, and it sloughs off dead skin. So that's a beautiful product. I use Dr. Ellen Marmer's serums. Um, they're new to the market, and um, she's my dermatologist and a brilliant, brilliant doctor, and she's developed these very new age products for um, skincare. And um, I use, in the winter, I use an, an oil moisturizer, and um, I use eye creams with, with um, vitamin C or vitamin K. I, as you can see, I... Um, 
really believe in skincare. I yeah, but I can't see you, by the way, but I can see that you really like skincare. <laughs> I have I have one cleanser and a one moisturizer. You think you're getting away with things like, you know, it's like, I don't look so bad. I don't look so bad. Oh, my shoulders look okay. Oh, I don't look so bad. You know, oh, okay, well, I'm kind of, you know, California girl. And, I'm, and then all of a sudden, it's like one day you look and you see yourself passing by a car window or the mirror and you just go, you know, I, what I have a habit of doing, Barb, is I go out. And I don't really have any makeup on. And then I, I wiggle my way into a Sephora or something like that. And then I put on all the makeup in Sephora. I put it on. And I walk out looking great. And I go, okay, Wendy, don't leave the house without makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's kind of fun to do because, you know, people don't mind. And if you if you, uh, you go into MAC and then they go, here, let me do your makeup for you. I say, I have to do my makeup for me. You know, I don't want you doing it. I just want to let me test it out in here. And and then I walk out and I and I... Then I see how I look in the sun and, you know, stuff like that. I never buy the makeup, but I, sh I should. I should take better care. So thank you for, for that advice. Um, uh, the, the perennial project, does it have anything? Do you have any, do you do any events getting ladies together? Um, let's tell everybody where to follow you because it's just perennial project on right. Instagram also. Um, I'm, I, that's the next stage of perennial project is um, bringing it to life. I am talking to... Um, somebody about doing a live event uh, that would probably take about a year to coordinate based on the the um, type of scale that we're talking about. Um, and there is something very exciting happening in New York. There, I'm not going to give the name yet, but there is a clubhouse um, that's being developed by somebody. And I am getting involved in that. And the concept is to have a physical place for people like us perennials to go and, and have you know, meetings, conferences, lectures, you know, go in and learn something, go in and work there. And I think these physical manifestations are really important. You know, it can't just be online groups, online chats, online lectures. No, you need the physical connection, you know? Yeah. Yes. We need to connect and, you know, just even, um, in terms of aging, you know, there's a lot of uh, proof around that. You you need to have that cognitive connection to remain vital. We become, as we get older, we're, we still feel young and we still feel vital and we still feel full of what we're, you know, we, and we probably are going to live another 20 years. But we start to question how we, uh, our sensuality, our appeal to other people, because we are home alone a lot, or maybe we just are really comfortable in being the, the, like the woman that never remarried and is kind of happy being single through her fifties. And all of a sudden she gets into her mid sixties and says, Oh, wait, I wish I had a partner to get older with kind of thing, you know, and yet where do we really go to communicate, share our wisdom, gain, like you said, other expertises um, and or share our expertise and teach others. So that becomes something that brings us down, right? And doesn't we doesn't want us to just go sit at the bar at, you know, Wolfgang Puck's restaurant. But it's something that we don't want to be the sad person at the bar having a drink, even though we are not sad and we are just having a drink. <laughs> we don't want to be seen that way. And it's loneliness is a part of aging and happens with being disconnected. So whether you're looking for a friend group or a romantic sexual partner, I, I think there is this thing about um, not wanting to be alone and your community can exist of, you know, a, a partner of your choosing or it can be a group of people. But I think we all need People. We do. We all need to have that connection. We need to have that uh, that physical connection. So that sounds that sounds very cool. You know, there was on, and I'll let you go after I tell you this. I was talking to you the very first time I spoke with you, and you said something to me that really got me thinking, and I thought was so true. And and I every time I see your picture, I see you on Instagram. I think about that, and you kind of set me straight on something that was, I was talking, I was really kind of saying how I really didn't know this whole ageism thing was out there. And, you know, that, you know, it's really kind of funny to see all these people that are on Instagram that are over 50, over 60, and this whole tribe that's out there on Instagram, which, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. But 
maybe I was being a little snarky about it. My Instagram, by the way, is just a really kind of funny me Instagram, and I don't take it super seriously, and I hope that people like me because I don't take it super seriously. But your Instagram is beautifully curated and done really well, and, and other women that I've had on that are from Instagram, same thing. And I love that because uh, I'm in advertising and branding, and you you know that. And so it's done with style and grace, and, and it's a choice, and it's wonderful. Um, but you said to me that what's really wonderful is that it doesn't really matter because what matters is is that we are all coming together to make a change in this world and that's that's the power of what we are all doing in our own individual ways but we're doing that together and I just wanted to I just wanted to tell you that I I really appreciated that that you had oh. said that to me oh thank you that that's very kind of you to to note and and to remember and yeah, it's true. You know, we're all communicating our our versions of the message in our own personal ways. But the idea is that, you know, people are doing it. We're, we're putting ourselves out there. And I think we all have to do it in a really authentic, honest kind of way. And that's what makes it appealing. It's not just about pretty pictures and putting up, you know, an idealized version of, you know, who we want people to think we are. That's just too banal. It's got to be real, you know, and if you do it in a snarky way and that's representative of you, then awesome. Awesome. That's you. You be you. I think that that's really, that is really powerful. It's that the responsibility we have to the generations that are coming after us, because for the first time ever, we are faced with all of this ageism that is in the world. And it is because we are living longer and we are the first generation. I don't, I'm not calling us the boomers. I'm calling us this like perennial generation that is basically living longer and being responsible for what the world is going to be like for the millennials <laughs> and how, how they're going to move through life and move into their second half of life. Hopefully we will do something in this world to change things so that it's easier for them than it is obviously now being easy than it is for us. So that that, uh, that uh, that's going to wrap this show up, Barb. I just I, I really want to thank you for taking the time. I love what you're doing, and um, and I wish you the best of luck and on everything. Thank you, thank you, Wendy. This was a lot of fun and and just great to chat with you and put it all out there. And I I love your honesty and your energy. It's it's really great and infectious. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, thanks for listening. Please leave me a review wherever you downloaded this podcast and subscribe. Always subscribe. If you have an event coming up and would like to book me as a speaker, please visit wendycooper.com where you can find out more about me, my services, and leave a suggestion for the a topic or for a guest. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you shared it with a friend. You can follow me on Facebook and on Instagram at C Spot Talk. That is the letter C Spot Talk. You can find a complete bio on LinkedIn and you can enjoy lots of videos on my YouTube channel. There's some pretty funny videos there as well as past episodes of this podcast. Again, thanks for listening and we'll see you next week.